those things, the latest things we have done. So probably it's the container and uh, um, yeah, I'll, I'll bring it up and we'll take a look. Copy, I'm gonna put it on today's notes and we'll go through it. And then uh, I'm gonna talk about lots of cool stuff if uh, we are okay with the construction and destruction. So <clears throat> what we have done last time was Recording. What we have done last time was to show, uh, we actually showed you um, how we can automate creation and destruction of an object. That's literally what we have done, and nothing other than that. It's not uh, some kind of a, well, workshop four, you don't want to see that. Uh, Yeah, so what we did, we created a couple of uh, few procedures and we said, uh, be, be careful, the, the things you see over here, they are not functions. Uh, today in OP345, we actually had 25 minutes discussion on that because of this session didn't go in through properly. So again, for now, please understand that con uh, constructors are not functions to be called. You will see in some notes, people do stuff like this. They write <coughs> things like, uh, in function definitions, you will see people writing things like, in some functions, people write something like, this is equal to container, something like that. They do stuff like this. If you see this, I'll explain what it is. It looks like they're actually calling a function. Inside methods of a function, they do that. And they don't like it. Like for example, I'll explain to you why they're not good. Like for example, if I am in container right now, I had uh, uh, an init uh, function over here to call and initialize stuff. Uh, I commented it, we didn't need it uh, because we uh, added the default values over here and we mentioned that when actually an object is created, if you put initial values up there, those, in, those initial values are set first and then construction actions are gonna come to play. Are, are we okay down to this point? Okay, so we remove the init thingy. But, and so for example, right now, if I am in this container at this point, you will see like the one that actually sets the content and volume and so on and so forth, okay? If I actually go to here, let me see how we coded that. So we said over here, set content amount on volume. We did it like this. Just imagine instead of doing something like this, you will see at some places they do this. If they have that set con, Okay, and, and they write this. They write, for example, uh, m amount is equal to amount. Amount and m volume is set to volume. You see code like this. Because we say target of this pointer means reference of the current object, correct? So target of this pointer becomes a reference of the direction. So they say me is set to a container with, a, with content. So it's essentially reusing the code of their uh, constructor. This is a bad thing. <coughs> you know what they are actually doing when they are calling a constructor? At this moment, right at this moment, a new object, nameless object, gets created in the cyberspace, in memory. So it creates a nameless object out of this container. It sets its name and everything. Then it does a blind copy from the content of that to the current object. So first it builds a nameless object. It copies everything from that one to this one, and then it continues with everything, right? So what happens over here is this. 
to do a, because we were lazy to write a simple assignment and copying and stuff like that, it has to create an object, copy everything from one object to another, then between lines 18 and 19, it has to kill that nameless object. Nameless objects are doomed to die at the end of the line they are executed. Compiler won't keep them because they have no reference, they have nothing to hold on to. So you are saying create a nameless object, copy it on me, and then kill it. Why? Just call the set function. Why doing all those extra stuff? So for now, as a rule that I say, don't use continue in a loop, don't use break in a loop, don't use go to statements, have proper indentation, and don't call a constructor. For now, do it that way until we understand exactly what it means. When the time comes, then you can actually create nameless objects using a constructor when needed, not now. Got it? So I'm just going to remove it so as if I, have, I haven't done it. And I don't want you to do it because for some reason, when you are copying your assignment from some obscure assignment that was done three semesters ago and somebody did it this, still you're going to do that for me. Please don't, okay? I explicitly am telling you, don't do it. It's not good for your health, and I'll be very disappointed if I see that, okay? Questions down to here. Suggestions? Objections? Are we good? We're okay? All right. <coughs> Another way, of, another way of initializing members of uh, uh, member variables or attributes, we have another way of initializing member, member variables or attributes. Right now, I initialize them all to zero, right? Okay. Let's say um, I didn't do that. Let's say I don't have the initialization, for example, for the amount and this one and this one. And I do not have an init function either. How can I set them up before anything happens, before my constructor starts running? You have a space in your app, in your C++ code, not in the, not in the, in a place you are creating. You have a space that I call it initialization area. If you Google initialization area, there is no such thing. I just call it like that because it makes sense and students understand it properly, but later on, you'll know what I mean, okay? So <clears throat> initialization area is the space between the parentheses of the constructor and the open curly bracket of its scope. This is the place. This is the place you can initialize anything container owns before the code is executed. How do you do that? You simply put a column over here and you put the name of the thing. So I want to set the volume. I'm going to say M volume and I'm going to do that. So exactly the same thing that I did over there. In here I'm going to say M. What is the other one? Tell me, well, M uh, amount, and I'm going to do that. It was M uh, content, and I wanted to set it to null PTR. I'm going to do that. That means null PTR, right, when there is nothing in it. More than that, just take a look at here. In here, okay, set content is setting the content, right? I'm just going to change the code for you to see what I am um, doing. If I wanted to, because validation is happening, it becomes a little tricky. But anyways, if I wanted to set, if I wanted to set the volume to 220 and the other one to 222 over here, okay, let's say the set that I have has two different versions. So in here, let's say I have two different sets one set that only sets the content, the other one that sets uh, the, the amount and the volume. We can actually do that. So um, if I had something like that, I wanted to set the volume and the amount over here to 220. 
If I wanted to do that, I could simply do this. In here again, put M volume and put here 220. Again, you know that you can do it like this too, right? Potatoes, potatoes, the same thing, universal way or regular way, it doesn't make any difference. So I'm going to put one like this and the other one like that. So I can say over here, M uh, value uh, R amount. And in here, I'm going to put 220. There is one thing that you need to know that uh, sophisticated compilers are going to warn you because these are very low level type of setting. You have to make sure that the order of these match the order of what you have. You have amount, volume, content. In here, it should be amount, volume, content. So that's wrong. In here, it might not give you a warning. Just two seconds. In here, it might not give you a warning. But if you go on the new compiler on Linux, it's going to tell you the order of initialization is wrong. So uh, I, uh, I need to do this. I need to bring this over here. Oh, not like there. Sorry. Amount, volume, and content. And in here, it's going to be amount, volume. And I want to set the content too. So I'm, in here, I'm going to say M content. Just for the heck of it, I'm going to say null PTR over here so you know. OK? So now it's going to initialize everything to those values before this is called. I know it's redundant, but I'm just teaching. OK? Now, in here, in this constructor, you want to set the amount and volume and do whatever. It, this set is an intelligent set. It actually set things properly. It actually, if the amount is greater than volume, it's going to do something for you, right? So what we can do over here is to actually mention something like, I can actually put over here M amount. And in here, actually put amount. The argument that is coming from there, that is acceptable too. So it's going to put it over there. I can actually say over here M volume. And put that value over there. Where is it? Uh, volume. And let's say I'm not initializing the content. Uh, let me remove the content from here. Should I? Yeah, I'm going to remove the content being null PTR from here and here. I'm going to add that one to here. So. Content is because I just want to show you what sequence of things are, how things happen. So <clears throat> we are okay down to this point. We understand what have you. Go ahead. Line number 10. Uh, so you're saying this one and that one. The answer is no. The other one is it's called aggregated assignment. You're going to learn in OP345 that that's a new thing. You can actually do it. You can use that one if you want to. So it's, it's for initialization, instead of parentheses, you can use that. There's no problem with it. I would start using it little by little because that's a new version of C++. It's a new thing. For reasons that is too rich for our blood, I cannot tell you what the differences are. When you come to 345, I'll explain. Okay. But it's good. Anything that you know, you can use. For initialization, you can use. You want to set an integer to 25, instead of writing equal to 25, open a curly bracket, put 25 in it. You want to set an array, don't put an assignment. Open a curly, curly bracket and put the number of elements in there. Same. You want to set all the elements to 0, just open a curly bracket and close it. It's an intelligent type of assignment. Just use it to get used to it. OK? Are we OK down to here? All right. So <laughs> I love the way you do like that. It's like, yeah, <laughs> I'm OK, but I'm not sure if I'm OK or not. <laughs> Am I OK? <laughs> so, uh, so uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to write, I'm going to create a container over here. I'm going to say container. And I'm going to put the one with three things in here. What's going on? Are we good? Everything's fine? Tell us so we can laugh too. Water. Uh, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it like this. So water, I'm going to a container. See, I can actually do, I, I'll, I'll, I'll explain something later on. So uh, water, I'm going to call it W, and I'm going to say W, do I have a display? Yeah, and I think it was something like this. Whoa, too big. Did I do that? Yes. Okay, so let's, I'm going to walk through with F11 which means I'm going to go inside and see exactly what are the sequence of things happen. So you know, first this initialization happens, that that one happens, then it goes to the, so we want to, we want to learn this, okay? <coughs> Magical F11 pressed, okay? So the constructor is about to be called. The constructor is about to be called. As soon as it happens, where does it go? The first place that is going is here, then what happened? Wait, 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 wait. Why didn't it go over here? It should have gone there. One more time. Stop. Oh, what, what am I? Uh, yeah. You cannot see the variable, you said? What do you mean, you cannot see the variable? Um, oh, sure. Like, well, where is the, let me see, view, where's the watch window, other windows, you see watch window anywhere? I, I, these years of programming over here, I could never see how to bring up the watch window. I have to do it like this, I have to say add to watch, and then it brings it up. Where is the add to watch? Add to watch. Does it change that much? No, wait, 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 give me a second. There should be an app to watch here. Huh, maybe it should be during execution. You watch, which one did you say? Watch window, do you see a watch window? Yeah, okay, let's 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 start running and see if that's 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 what I can do. It should be I So you see that watch? I just wanted to see if I can bring it up. But anyways, I want I'm gonna say over here this. This means the current object, right? So if you do that, then if I am inside the object, that's gonna get activated. So let's bring that one over. How can I make sure that it's okay? So I'll bring that watch over there. <coughs> so I press F F11. I get right into here. So as you see over here, if you expand this, you see amount it's unable to read memory. So none of them are set yet. I press F11. And as you see, uh, one by one they're set. The content value is null and everything. And then it goes in here. So I wanted to, a previous version of Visual Studio actually goes to the header and shows you that null is being set. It's not here. So just letting you know that gets first. Then it's going to be this. Then it's going to be the constructor. OK? So that's the sequence of things happen. And then, uh, as you see, set is not called. But you see that amount and volume are 220. So everything is set up and initialized before this thing is called. And now it goes to set and all, does all the good stuff it's supposed to do. OK? So that's that. Um, and now, when the constructor is actually being called, that's when, when constructors are actually called. Take a look at this. If I say over here, W, this is not a good example for that because it has dynamic memory allocation in it. If I give you that example, it's going to crash. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you something else. So this one is going to be container main, a uh, dash container main. Usually, I, I, I have never talked about this with OP244 at this stage. But because we have time, I'm doing it, OK? So in here, I create. Uh, class uh, data. So I have a class called data. 
I usually call it a container, but that's going to be get mixed with that one. So class um, num, I'm going to call it, something like that, integer m value. So it's holding a value. The class is number. And I'm going to put over here public. I'm going to create a constructor for it that accepts a value. And I'm going to put an, uh, like, like you do for functions, you can actually add default value for the arguments over here. So in here, I'm going to say int value set to, uh, say, 0. And in here, I'm going to say m value is set to value, right? Now I'm going to do the display thingy, which means o stream reference display, uh, o stream reference OSDR is set to C out. So by default, it sets it to C out, and it's constant. It's not going to change anything in here. And I'm going to say OSDR because now OSDR is the new name for C out in the argument, right? So I can use OSDR as I'm using this. So, or, or let's make it even better. I'm going to say C out reference. So I can say C out reference because it's the new name for C out. I can just use it, right? C out reference. And in here, I'm going to say print uh, M value. So it prints the M value. And at the end, it returns C out. So return C out reference for later things to be called. And now I'm going to create the destructor just to see what happens. So in here, num, uh, that's the destructors. I'm going to say C out uh, removing <coughs> M value. This is how you study. OK? Write a simple class. Write a simple constructor. Take a look at it. You don't want to be fancy with display. You just got to avoid display and show something. I did it like this just to teach you something. All right. So now I have a num that is working like this, and it displays, and I can, and it and it has a, a, the value that is being set over here. As you see, everything's good, right? Now take a look in here. I'm gonna say num n equals to, first of all, say num n, OK? And I'm going to say n dot display. I'm not going to pass c out to it, because by default, it's going to get the c out. But I can choose to pass it something else. Why? Because the sky is high. You're going to learn later on, OK? I'm, I'm giving it an option to use any of the family members of O stream. O stream is not just c out. There are so many different members of it. I can pass another one, OK, if I want. But I'm not doing it. It's just letting it be. For blindly, write your displays like that. Blindly, OK? Just follow me. Write it like that. When I teach it, you've got to go, ah, so that's why. All right? When the time comes. Uh, you might have that aha moment in your workshop four, OK, before even we get to the lecture, because the tester of workshop is using that. Anyways, so if I run this now, you will see that th what happens is this. <coughs> so um, it starts the program. Uh, let me just put, where, how do I put the execut execution over here close by? Let me just bring the watch down here. How do I bring it? Seriously? It's stuck? Oh, there you go. Put it back here and bring it down if I want to watch it later. And I don't want to pin it. Now let's come down here at left and show the execution at right. All right. So now when it comes in here, now when it comes in here, it goes to the constructor My apologies. <laughs> I edited the wrong file. Sorry about that. So I edited the wrong file. I, I did this in container.cpp where it's supposed to be in container main. Give me a second. Let me fix it. So everybody clear your brains from, uh, and, and give me a second to fix this. I edited the wrong file. Save. Back to business. My apologies. My apologies. Excusez-moi. Okay, so let's continue. There you go. One more time. Take two. Okay, so 
as you see over here, it comes over here, creates a defaulted n, which comes over here, sets the value to zero, and it sets the value to zero, and then it comes down, then it goes to display, and in display it's gonna show zero, come out, go to end L, that is going to new line, and after that, because n is out of its life, it comes over here and removes it. Are we good with that? All right. To make it more descriptive, what I can do is to actually create messages to all these good stuff. So I can actually have over here something like a C out creating num with space, and I'm going to do like that. So I'm just going to show what I'm creating so it actually shows what is being created. And these type of things uh, really help to understand how programs work. So um, essentially it says creating num with zero, shows zero, removes zero. Are we good with that? Okay. Now what I'm going to do next is this. I'm going to create, I'm going to put over here 23, okay? So now 23 is passed to it and it works the exact same way. As you see, it says creating num with 23, shows the 23 and removes 23, right? Right? <coughs> now I'm going to do something else in here. One, two, three, four, five. What happens is that now the default co the one argument constructor is going to get called, and therefore when I run the program, it's going to show that one, two, three, four, five is created and removes it and done, right? So everything's good. Now to here, everything's fine. Now see what's going to happen. Now see what's going to happen. Okay, so I just brought this, the, 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 the assignment up. next line. What's the difference, right? When I run the program, it, this is a what the heck moment. So creating number 23 is fine because that was the default value I put for dn up there, right? What the heck is creating number 123? Where is the constructor for that? And then immediate, immediately removing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What the heck? And then all of a sudden, that 23 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and removes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 again. What the heck happened? No compilation error. Life is beautiful. <laughs> OK. That proves that assignment at the moment of creation is a call to one argument constructor. Assignment at the moment of creation is a call to one argument constructor. But at any other time, it's just an assignment operator. And when you set a double to an integer, what happens? What does the compiler do to a double? Promotes it. Wow, you should be a teacher. Promotes it. Woo. <laughs> so what does it mean to promote it? It essentially casts it, right? So if I set a double to an integer, it casts the integer to the double so the assignment can happen, right? Now I set a num to an integer, correct? So the compiler says, at left side, I have the type num. At right side, I have the type integer. Do I have a tool to cast this integer to a num? What is the tool? It it should be able to construct a num out of an integer. Does it have the tool? Yes, the constructor. The constructor receives an integer, creates a num, correct? So what it does actually for you behind the scene, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly what I told you not to do, which is this. To make the assignment happens, it promotes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to a num, and then does what we call 
a member-wise member copy or a blind copy. It, it's like a Xerox copy. It puts the two things, it puts the first byte to the first byte, second one. It doesn't care what's inside the object. I have two objects with the exact same type. It copies the guts of this one to guts of that one. Therefore, the 23 of num will be overwritten by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because they are exactly at the same place. They are ident identical objects, right? And because of that, it's written. So careful, OK? When you <coughs> do assignment at any other moment than the moment of creation, it's not a constructor anymore. It first creates a temporary nameless object out of that value to try to build that thing, and then puts it over there. And it gets even further. So if you have, if I have, <coughs> if I had another, if I had another object, and that object's name was, for example, weight, and weight would receive a num is it as its constructor. So if I had a class called weight, weight received a num in its constructor, and I set weight to integer, it will first promote the integer to a num, then it's going to promote the num to the weight, then it's going to call yours, it's do the assignment. So the compiler tries to figure a way out to make things happen, and that's a very dangerous thing. I always say don't leave stuff for default, because defaults happen behind the scene, and there are things that is, are least possible. And because of this fact, you can actually, I don't know if, if this is going to work, but let's see. Can compiler cast the double to an integer? Yes. So first it's going to double, cast the double to an integer, then it's going to cast the integer to a num, then it's going to do the num yada yada. And you know casting in C++ is now moved to the other side. We talked about that, or if you didn't, you read the notes, hopefully, okay? Cast in C, in, <coughs> in C++ is now done like this. So in C++, if you have uh, integer A and you want to cast a double into it, you say A is equal to double, one, two, three, four, point five, six, seven. In C, you put the cast around the type. In C++, you put the parentheses around the the, the value that you are casting. Why? Because it's now the constructor of double that is called, sorry, <sighs> what did I write here? Nobody, nobody's saying anything. It's not int, double, it's int. There we go. So I'm telling to cast the double to an int, which means call the constructor of int with a double and create a temporary nameless integer, then do the copying. In C++, casting happens like this. It creates a temporary nameless. So the constructor of the object you want to build must accept the thing you are casting. And then casting is possible. Are we good? So when you call a constructor, what happens? A temporary nameless object gets created and dies right after. Are we good with this? All right. I'm going to do it like this, so. <clears throat> so in here, I'm going to say <clears throat> B, what do we call it? Uh, temporary nameless objects dot CPP, right? So that's that n.display, and I'm going to do another one. I'm going to say n is equal to, oh, I put it in the wrong place, but it's okay, num, and I'm going to put over here 4, 3, 2, 1, and I'm going to do a display after that, so we know they are the same. Are we good? Are we okay? Are we okay, 1? Are we okay too? All right. So, 
I created a constructor uh, container that does amazing stuff. It uh, adds things and uh, as a container, it keeps track of what we have over here and all the good stuff. But I want to be able to uh, make this container work a little closer to reality, which means you should be able to pour something from one container to another. Okay. Uh, so I I want to be able to uh, say A pour B. So B gets poured into A. Are you okay with this? Very simple thing. So. <coughs> I'm going to come to this container that H of mine, and let me just bring this up because it's not that big anymore. Oh, you know what? This container is has lots of codes and stuff. I'm going to go back to num, do the work with the num thingy, and then after that, apply to container that is more complicated. Okay. So, <laughs> silence. All right. I, I get distracted like that. I'm a bad person when it comes to that. My apologies. So I will start that topic, and that's it, and that's going to be the end of today. So I'm not going to go too much about it, okay? So we have a num. We just found out that if I set it like that, it's going to happen. Some crazy things going to happen like that, and I don't want that to happen. I don't want stuff happen. So instead of this, I'm going to create a set function. So I'm going to create something like void set, and in here I'm going to put integer uh, value, okay, and in here what I'm going to do, I'm going to say uh, m value is set to value, correct? So now instead of writing this assignment thingy, what I can do is to write n dot set, so I, no constructor is called anymore. Do we understand this? So now when I run this, the result is it creates one, two, three, no temporary stuff are created. I took over, okay? Problem is that still if they do the assignment thingy, we're going to be in trouble, okay? Next thing I want to do, I want to add two numbers. So I'm going to write over here, I'm going to call something like void add a value. And in here I actually can say m value plus equal value, right? I can do that. So if I want to add some value to it, so, and first of all, this 23 sucks. I'm going to make it zero because usually you want, you, when you create something, you want to be at 23 and it doesn't make sense. So now in here, I can actually do something like n.add. I'll go um, 100 or 1,000 I'm going to add to it. So I can display the two. And this is going to happen like this, correct? Right? I just added a thousand to it, right? Not only that, I can do something like this. I can have n and m, and let's make m 10, for example. I can write a function over here saying <coughs> void add. Oh, let's not make it a void. Let's make it a num. Num add num const num reference left and const num reference right. So I have a left one and a right one. And what I can do over here is to create a, a query. So in here, I'm going to create a query called value. I'm going to say void, uh, sorry, int value const that returns the value. Right, so I can return the value of a num. So in here, I can say a num uh, sum, 
and I put left dot value plus right dot value, correct? Are we good? Now I can say return sum. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Yes. Oh, I'm gonna do it now. No, I'm gonna do it, yeah. So I did the add. Now in here I'm gonna say, and I'm gonna LM, and I'm gonna create uh, S over here, and I'm gonna say S is equal to add uh, N over here and M. And I'm gonna say S dot display. So, so the right one is 10. Uh, let's make it this, because I'm gonna make these numbers smaller so, <laughs> So it's easier to do. So that's 10, and in here it's gonna be um, 20. And uh, yeah, so as we be set to 20, then I'll add 20 becomes 30, then I have that one, so it's good. Now when I run this, you will see that all these good stuff happen. So, I'm gonna, excuse me. I'm gonna remove the messages. <laughs> you don't need to see them now. Um, if I remove that, that's see, I try to be <laughs> smart and put two things at the same time and that's gonna screw everything up. So this is gonna be M value and I'm gonna put the assignment at top, okay. And I'm gonna comment this. So I don't want messages to be shown just to see what happened. So, <clears throat> so now if you look at it, I have 10, 30 and 40, right? So what happened over here is this. I have n set 10, right? Display 10 that was set and printed, right? Then I have add 20 to n. n was 10 became 30, correct? I had the 10 on, as m over here. I said 30 plus add 30 to 40, got the value, sum, return, now I have display, right? Any problem with this? Questions down to this point? Yes. No, this is this is initialization. This is not assignment. I'm creating an assigning. That's a constructor. Assignment at the moment of creation okay. is a construct is a one argument constructor. Remember that. Are we good down to this point? Right? This one you're talking about? Uh, Which line? 30. On 30? Okay. Seriously? Okay, and I'm gonna make this five so it's different. So now when we are running, it's gonna be 10, 30, and 35, so that's what we're gonna have. Are we okay with this? Okay, so let's set it like this. I'm gonna call it ABC functional. Got a CP. Now see what I'm gonna do over here. Please take a look. I'm not gonna, I am not changing anything, I'm just renaming functions. I'm just renaming functions. This set, I'm gonna call it operator equal. Add, I'm gonna call it operator plus equal. And this add, I'm gonna call it operator equal plus. Got it? Okay, why is it giving me an error in here? Oh, because op operator, or operator. There we go. And What did I do? What is this value? 1660. Oh, stupid compiler. All right. Are we good? So now in here, I'm going to just go. So set was what? Operator equal. Right? This one was operator plus equal. I just changed the names. This one is, <laughs> I cannot type, man. Operator plus. Let me fix this. 
right? I just rename the functions. Did I do anything? And I run it, no difference, right? Correct? Now take a look. An operator overload can be called using its function name or the operator version, which means now I can actually do this. And in here, and in here, Ta-da! Welcome to operator overloading. Operator overloading is nothing but a function. So when I actually run this, of course, the outcome is identical because I didn't change anything. It runs, you're going to have 10, 30, 35. But now you can actually change when plus an e. Like, for example, assignment used to call a constructor, right? Not anymore because you took over. So now you are saying, hey, if you can't find, see if there is a U, if there is, if there is one defined. If it's defined, use that one. If nothing is there, then do. So, so what happens is that when I do F11 over here, take a look. These are constructors. We know that. We don't want to go through it. But as soon as it comes over here, it wants to cast n to a num, says, wait. Do we have an assignment operator for, uh, overload for it? Yes. So it uses this as the argument of the operator and left one as the owner. And whoosh, it's called that one. Then it displays it, of course. Then in here it says plus equal to 20, right? So now what happens, plus equal, do I have a plus equal? Yes, it goes over here, right? And then it comes over here. This is not even a member operator. This is a helper operator. Worst way of doing things. So yuck, yuck, yuck. Disgusting. I mean, like, don't do this. Well, it's possible. That could be a member too. That plus, plus operator could be a member too. I'll tell you why we did it like that. Just to give you an example. But I could make that one a member too. There is no problem with that. But we'll see. So in here, uh, uh, I'll do a minus. So I'll do the exact same thing with minus, but I'm going to make it as a member. Okay. So and now in here, when I go F11, it's going to go right into the operator. Obviously, it's going to create some, and it's going to create a copy and return. Do all the stuff is happening. Obviously, it has to do that. It cannot change any of these two. When you say A is equal to B plus C, B and C are supposed to remain unchanged, and you have to return a value to that thing, right? So you have to create it. There's no other way. I could not return a reference in here. I had to create a name and return it. I had no choice. But for example, for the, uh, let's, so it will do the exact same thing, and it prints it out, and so on and so forth. So the, so the output is printed. But let's say if I, let, they always say, never, ever, ever, do any operator overload with a member uh, if, uh, as a helper function if you can do it as member. Let's do the exact same thing but for minus. I can simply write over here. Now all these voids, remember I told you voids are useless, never do void? It's always better to make this num reference and return this. So you can actually use it like your operator, like you can say A is equal to B plus equal C. You want to do that. If you don't return the reference, that's not going to work out. So in here, I'm going to say again, uh, num reference, and I'm going to say return this. It, it, it's not going to affect over here, but I could do this now. I could say S is equal to. If, I, if it was void, I couldn't do that, but now I can. It returns the reference of n, so it can, I can continue, right? That's the part, talk, not talking about that. What I want to say is this. If I want to do minus, how do I do it? So I'll do the exact same thing. I'm going to say num. I cannot return a reference because I have to create a new one. I cannot change left and right, correct? So I'm going to say operator minus, and this one is going to be const num reference right. 
Who is left? This. I am left. The object that is here, that owns the left. So I don't need to make it a helper function. Now I'm going to say over here, uh, I'm going to create a copy of what I have here, and I have to make sure this is a const2 so I don't change it. So I have to say num uh, return is equal to this. Now I have the copy of me. Now I'm going to say ret plus equal minus write dot value, correct? Because that's essentially what, what it is, right? I reduce the value. So, so whatever the value it returns, it returns an integer, right? I do a plus, I already did a plus equal for it. So I'm going to say add the minus of it to the, to the return. So, and, and because I already am returning that, I can simply say return, right? So see, this is going to actually do this. I can actually say over here, s is equal to n minus m now. And I'll go s display. All right? And now if I run it right down to this point, when it comes right to this point, essentially, uh, let me actually show you to it, show it to you better so you don't get confused. This is essentially this point operator minus that receives the DM. Right? And it's not going to change N. So I'm enforcing it. So again, uh, if I run it one more time, but it could be called like this. Operator is operator, it's just a function. It means minus belongs to n and it's m. So now if I actually run it right down to this point and stop, it goes in here, right is m. Oh, let me get into it. Right is the one that has five and ret becomes a copy of the current one. So now ret will have 30. And now I say ret plus equal minus value. So it so the plus equal of ret is called, goes over there. Whoa. So it returns the value, that is 5. And then it pa passes that value to this value, which becomes minus 5. Minus 5 will be added to 30, returns that one, and returns the reference of ret, and destroys that uh, thing that we didn't need. And uh, the value... Uh, the operation is done. Now it reduced the, that one with by five. Okay. This is just a preview. We're going to go through a whole thing again. I just uh, this is not this this week's lecture. It's next week's lecture, right? So the battery is low. Somebody's to your rescue. What is? How much do I have? Six minutes remaining. I'm going to go until it dies. Okay. So. Should I? Is it, is it enough or should I? I don't think I should continue. Should I? Show you one more thing. Yes. Pardon me? Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> important question is here. It says, how does the plus work? Because it doesn't have a member, right? So operators can be either a member or a function, standalone function. Again, when I say operator equal, don't think of it as you did in IPC with pointers. Somebody told you pointers, like, oh my god, pointers. It's not pointer, it's just a variable. Operators are just a function. Can you have a standalone function that receives two objects? Yes. So you can have a standalone operator that receives two operands. So the compiler is smart. When you come to this plus thingy, when it comes to this plus, so let me just uh, bring this down, so, or I'm going to comment this one. So when the, when the compiler gets to this, it says n plus m. First it checks to see n has a plus. Does it? No. Ignores that. Now it says, is there an operator plus that accepts two arguments? Yes, so I'm going to call that one. And then returns whatever and so on and so forth, and it keeps going ahead. 
Now, the last thing before, because we only have six minutes over here to go through. What if I want, instead of display, I want to say C out S. I want that. 